This tom was converted into a floor tom snare drum. Find out what I did right and what I did wrong coming up. Hi, my name is Kevin Zahn, and if this is your first time on Rhythm Notes, please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming and home recording today. I had a 13 inch diameter, 11 inch deep tom on the shelf for like 10 years, and I love this drum. It's a great drum, it's a Pearl Masters custom, you know, maple drum, belongs to a, a beautiful kid of mine, and, and I just couldn't leave it on the shelf anymore. I had to do something with it. Now I always use the side snare, and I saw a lot of drummers out there using like deep snares, and I thought, you know, do people turn toms into snare drums? Turns out, floor toms into snare drums is a big deal. But it wasn't until I saw Larnell Lewis on Drumeo with his deep snare in between his floor tom and kick drum that I was really inspired to take action, do something with this drum, convert it into a floor tom snare. The simple answer is I added floor tom legs and snares to this 13 inch tom. The fine tuning of the snares to get the snare response that I was looking for became more complicated than I thought it would be. I made some mistakes, I did a few things right, and I fixed some problems in the long run. Here's how I did it. The first step was to buy the parts. I used Drum Factory Direct, and it was very easy. But before I went to Drum Factory Direct, I actually checked out the specs on the rims and to see what kind of rim would actually fit that drum before I started buying parts. It turns out that it was not hard at all to find the pearl specs for the, that rim, uh, to buy the snare side rim so that the snares would go through the rim as they're supposed to. So it was very easy on Drum Factory Direct to just match up the specs and get what I needed. Make sure you don't make a simple mistake like buy the wrong size snares. I was using a 13 inch tom, so I bought 13 inch snares. They work perfectly. The next step was to mark the hole patterns, and I used masking tape in the areas where I needed to mark the holes. I didn't overthink the layout of the hardware too much. Just make sure that you mark the center lines of the holes so that when you're drilling, you're drilling right in the center. This will minimize any error in your measurement marking and the drilling process. It's important not to place the strainer and butt plates too close to the edge. I measured my other snare drums and found a reasonable distance and went with that. Step back from the drum and make sure the markings look even. The next step was to drill the holes. And I started by drilling pilot holes. A pilot hole is when you drill a smaller hole that's gonna guide the larger drill bit. So I used a smaller drill bit because it won't drift as much. See, when you drill into wood, it's gonna drift. Even on a drill press, it's gonna drift a little. I'm not using a drill press in this case, I'm using a handheld drill, it was much harder. But I knew the nature of drilling into wood, so I knew what I was up against, and I was comfortable making that choice. If you're not comfortable drilling into your drum, get the tool that you need to do it properly, or bring it to someone who is a professional and can do this properly. If you do have this problem where drill bits are, are digging into the side and grabbing too much, just step down the bits a little bit and gradually increase the size. That will reduce how much it's grabbing into the side and you'll open up the hole slowly. You don't wanna to take too much, but you need to open the hole. If you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button and please share it with someone who you think will also get value out of it. The next step is to fit the hardware. Keep all the screws in a container so you don't lose anything. Line up the parts and make any adjustments to the holes to fit the hardware. This means maybe opening the hole a little bit larger with a larger drill bit if necessary. Uh, sometimes you can get away with widening the hole with the same drill bit by pushing up against the side, favoring one side or another. That's a little bit more, um, unreliable, so I don't recommend doing that if you're not comfortable doing it. Definitely step up the size of the drill bits to accomplish the size of the hole that you're looking for. Most of the hard wheel will cover up messy drill holes, so it's not the end of the world if the drill holes look a little messy, you're not gonna see it. The next step is to cut the snare bed. Now this is one of the things that I did not know about. I actually did not put snare beds on this drum initially. I put it all together, thought I was all ready to go, and I was unpleasantly surprised 
at the sound. It was horrific. So a little bit of a Google search with the issues that I was facing, and it turns out I just needed to add snare beds. So I used the rotary saw to cut out a very conservative amount of the bearing edge, and then I finished it off with a sander. Now it's easier to take more wood off. It's pretty much impossible to add it. So go easy on the snare beds. You don't need much. If you're not comfortable cutting into the wood, just go wider and shallower. If you go wider and shallower, sometimes that works. The next step was to assemble the drum. And aside from playing the drum and hearing the drum, this is probably the most satisfying part, to see it all together. It's a beautiful thing. The final step was the fine tuning. And this, like I said, started off a little bit problematic, but once I got the snare beds designed and, and put into place, it changed everything. Fine tuning the bottom snare head, the snare side head, um, was a little bit, you know, this way or that way. I didn't know whether to crank it up like a, a snare that I would use on, on, on my, my main snare, or I didn't know whether to go a little bit flat with it. So I went somewhere in the middle because I still wanted this tom to sound like a tom when the snares are off, but I wanted to sound like a deep snare when they're on. So I had to find a place. The top head gave me more problems because the top head had a dampening issue. And you know I thought maybe I should change the head, but before I changed the head, I actually tried a bunch of different dampening methods. And actually, I, I made a whole video about drum dampening uh, methods and products, and I'll put that up here in the cards and link it down below in the description. Now, the dampening method I went with was just simple. It was tape. Tape on the underside of the batter head. I put small strips all along where the batter head makes contact with the bearing edge. And when I put it down on the drum and tightened it up, it sounded exactly the way I wanted it to. Not only did it sound great, with no other dampening on it. When I added dampening, like toppers and things like that, moon gels or whatever, it sounded even better. So it's exactly the way I want it, the way I have it set up. If you like this video and you want to watch more, check out this one suggested to you by YouTube and check out this one suggested to you by Rhythm Notes. Please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming and home recording today and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.